rumor. So I'm quite strict on social media for the Nazis, but we don't stop them from it, their personal life. It, it, um, what? What? Sorry. sorry. So, so, so I'm just going to say, so th they can use social media? Yeah, they, they're allowed to use social media. But, but how, do you, how do you train them? We, we don't really train them. We, you know, we have to, we, do, we have a meeting, a one-to-one -one session with the North one. And it's quite simple. We just tell them not to promote any hatred on social media. Just because you, you like you said, an ambassador of Islam, you spread the message of peace, love and unity, and you praise the best of creation, peace be upon them. So we train them not to get into you know, politics, basically, mm. because it is, it is quite easily you know, attracted to yeah, get yeah. into politics, etc. Yeah, friction and yeah. sort of jealousy. And yeah, so that's, that's what all our outcomes stay away from. If they're going to be on the Buzz Mizar platform, not, it's not only my job, it's their job to also promote the message of peace, whether it's on Facebook, Snapchat, mm. yeah. So it's really important. Yeah, yeah. And, and sort of understanding that responsibility yeah. is a real big thing, isn't it? Yeah. Because, you know, I, I necessarily people are very quick to judge and they're very yeah. quick to put stuff out on social media, which generally tends to be, in most <laughs> okay. cases, lies or yeah. attacks against each other. I mean, how do you manage, how do you get somebody, you know, I don't know, a, a young child like uh, Talha Tariq was with you first, he, wasn't he? Yeah, he is still. He's, he's still, still with, with you. It, so yeah. Talha Tariq, a very young kid, yeah. beautiful Beautiful, beautiful voice. voice, great talent, um, very shy, yeah, very quiet, reserved. And how would you help him understand the bad side of social media? Um, I think we've already done that as a group, but I think just as you grow up and as you come in this field, just because I've been through, I've been through all the social media riots, etc. You've probably seen it yourself past mm -hmm. three, four years when I first started Buzz Mirza. Um, I think it's my responsibility to train the Nazis, like this is what you could put on Facebook, this is what you can't put on Facebook. I don't really stop them, but I think all our Nazis are well trained and they understand really well what they're going to put up on social media. And it's not only that, it's like you said, what else do we train them? It's the adab and the intricates of Nazis, what is really important for us. Because at the end of the day, we praise you the best of creation. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Yes, so we also do one-to-one -one sessions for other Balantikot. So make the appearance matters. Um, go out, speaking to the public, reciting in the public. There's, there's, you know, I, I, I take this as our main, you know, main rule of Buzmiza is to have other of the Naat, have mm -hmm. other of those who've written in the clan. So Alhamdulillah, you know, we do train them very well. And social media, of course, is is a toxic is, you know environment like i said mm. and people are gonna speak people are gonna spread hatred and this is something we like i said we train the nazis on to just post your nat videos or quotes or quotes from the hadith um quotes about the prophet's life and that's what they tend to do nothing else then you won't see any nazis getting involved in any type of politics on social media um uh, um, obviously, the conflict and that side yeah. of things, but then using it as a because you've got there's two sides, isn't there, to yeah. social media? There's this good side and there's and the, the bad, bad side, side yeah. and how, you know, it's not sort of negativity, so you get them away from that, yeah. but then use it as an opportunity to kind of uh, promote reading the Nath yeah. and how important that is. Yeah, I mean, the, the social media is, is really, uh, I think, it's really strong. Um, Facebook, Snapchat. This is where we get our events. To be honest, all this year, the three the events have come through social media, people messaging us on Snapchat, um, on Facebook. So it's, it's, a re it's a really powerful platform to promote yourself. It's a really powerful platform, not only within the UK events, internationally as well. And this mm. is how we got the Greece and Barcelona and the Pakistan tour was through Facebook. So it's not only the conflicts and the hatred, yeah. there's a good side to it, like you said, and it's a really good side because this is how Buzz Mirza made his name, was through promoting it through social media, Facebook, and now it's Snapchat, I think, is on a trend now. So, alhamdulillah, um, social media... See, I never understood Snapchat. <laughs> I, I, I don't know, I've, I've relatively, I'd say, I'm quite good at social media. Yeah. You know, I've got my Twitter page, I've got my Facebook page, my private one, and my, my public page. Um, but I never got around to doing Snapchat. I have Snapchat, I'll, I'll... Now, you do most of your stuff on Snapchat, Snapchat. you're telling me before we start yeah. the show. Come on, convince me, what is it about Snapchat that I need to do? It's, 
you know, you make a snap, you, you take a photo, yeah. video, show videos, 10 second videos, whatever. And you get to see people who've seen, you know, you get to see, oh, who's viewed my story. So it's quite exciting, you know, when you're doing projects and you get to see who viewed your stories. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's, again, it's a really, I think, strong and a powerful platform. Okay. A really powerful platform. And I, like you, I said, it's like you're sharing your life with the people, with the public. Can you do that on Facebook? I think Facebook's gone a bit since when I was 17, 16, 17 years old. Facebook was quite you know, popular. Yeah. But I think now for the youth, for us, for the new generation, it is definitely Snapchat. Okay. So would I come under the young category? Yeah. Good Please. man. So, okay. <laughs> well, what I'm going to do, uh, everyone, I'm going to, because it, you made such a convincing argument, and Osama in the control room also made a very convincing argument, I'm going to try it. Okay. I'm going to try it tonight. I'm going to, I'm going to download Snapchat. Uh, my children are going to laugh at me and say they've been, they've been pestering me for months for me to get it and I didn't get it, but okay, we should have done it before the show. We'll, we'll set you up after the show, yeah, uh, and, and then I'll tell you about it next week uh, on Friday Night Live next week. And I'd really love to have maybe some of your Nathquans here yeah, and just get to know them. I know, it'd be, it'd be brilliant. Yeah, too. so let's next time, uh, next time set, set you up so when they're, when they're free, because... All of them are either studying yeah. or they're working full time. Yeah. yeah. So, um, and that's the good thing I like about the North Hans here. It's not a full time job for them. No. They're, they're not doing it for financial gain. Yeah. Because you obviously have the bu busy period of Robbie Lomishi, yeah. Robbie Thani, uh, of Rosbach's uh, beloved Milad in, in, in that month. And then yeah. there might be pockets of uh, events throughout the year. Yeah. But they're still doing other stuff. How important is that when you're working with young people mm. to talk about education? Education is really important. I mean, we've got Nardquans, but none of our Nasheed artists are doing full-time Nasheeds. Um, most of them are studying, are in university, colleges and schools. And some are working. I'll give you a great example of how, like you said, it, it becomes really busy in Rabia level. Um, and eight weeks, eight weeks is non-stop. Every weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we had two events a day. It's, it's really busy. So. Someone like Bilal Yunus, I'll give an example of, he, he's a manager at a gym in Oldham. Is he? Yeah. So, I... Is he burning all those calories? Yeah, he is. He's a personal trainer as well. Wow. Yeah, so he's, he's doing really, really well, mashallah. Because, and, I don't know if he's watching this, Bilal. I don't know, are you watching this? He probably is. <laughs> are you watching this? If he, well, if he is watching, if he's not watching, then that's great, then I can say it. But if he's not, how do I know he's watching? Anyway. Um, you couldn't get very it. relatively. Um, uh, sorry, yeah, let's give you the number zero one two zero four nine three nine three nine three. Bilal, if you're watching, pick up the phone, give us a ring. It'd be nice to talk to you because you've had two shouts out on the program, and it'd be nice to hear your voice. But um, I, I wouldn't see him as a gym freak. <laughs> I did see that in the last few years as well. Yeah. I almost see him go to gym. He, you know, he's, oh, I don't know how do you say it. He's kind of put some weight on over the years, Langar. Yeah. Sankar de Langar, which Rabb Rakhi and Shifa wa Raj Raj ke khaya kar tam run lag ja wange. I think that's the... You know Punjabi? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Too much food, you know, Langar. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was everyday thing in Rambi Alawas. Yeah, yeah. Never used to eat food at home. You always eat uh, Langar. Yeah, yeah. And with Bilal, um, I've, he's been with us. The only reason I'm going to is because he's been with me from for the first day mm, he started, yeah, yeah. basically. Um, I've seen him go to university and get the degree and then teach in schools and then I've seen him progress. So he did not only put his focus in his Nath Khan, he's put his focus in education and now he's a manager at DW Gym in Oldham. So it, it, this is an example for the youth that we, education is so important. And Alhamdulillah, on you know, this Rabia level, it was a bit difficult because he's working full time, there's people asking for dates on his Mayfields, etc. I thought you said dates rather than Mayfields. Yeah. <laughs> get that clear. Sorry, I'm just trying to be flippant. Um, yeah, so, how, you know, he's got his full-time job, he's got family commitments, yeah. and then he's got, obviously, to put oh. in the Mayfields. So, what we, of course, he do a lot of shift swaps, doing the morning mm. shifts, etc. And it, it, didn't, it didn't mean that he took six weeks off, or he just left the job just mm. to get into a full eight-week, full-time now, yeah. Bonnie. We kept that schedule for him, we made it easy for him. What days he's have off, we will work around his days off, whatever dates we get from people who are organising the methods. So, his education, family is really important but for family me. Family is very well. important, isn't it? Um, but this past eight weeks, I've been travelling mm -hmm. all around the UK, and probably when we talk about my next project, I don't want to mention it. Yeah, yet. yeah, we can talk about it very uh, shortly. Yeah. I've been travelling around trying to promote that project as well. So, it's been difficult, but I always. 
sad to you than not once. Spend time with your family, spend time with your parents, you know. And sometimes it is difficult. You come in two, three o'clock in the morning after a mafir. Um, they do go on for quite a long time, six, seven hours. So it does get difficult, but like I said, education, if those who are watching today, uh, if you're going to become an art con, make sure you keep your education and make sure you spend time with your family. Because in essence, for you to, you know, to have that balance and uh, to make sure you're grounded, if you yeah. like, um, in communities, family is the most important thing, especially in our community. Yeah, definitely. Families, for me, my parents are the most important thing. So, um, I'm, and I think it's... And we're neighbours as well. Yeah. We don't live We far. live not far from each other. Yeah, do we? I know. And I never knew that yeah. till a few months ago. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, family is most important. You know, your parents, um, to be there with them and to see them smile, I think that's the best so thing. You told me earlier on about what you're doing to relax, uh, what you'd like to do in terms of, um, you know, yeah. chilling out. What do you do to relax? I mean, I assume you don't relax in the last eight, nine weeks. Yeah. But when you have time, what do you, what do you like to do? I watch um, Netflix. Netflix? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm quite keen off Netflix and watch the series. And have you watched like, Messiah? No, I haven't. I, I was, I don't want to watch it to be fair. So yeah, I know. Yeah. See, I did the same problem where people were saying to me, oh, you can't watch it, you can't watch yeah. it. Um, it. It's not very good. And so anyway, I just thought, no, I'm going to make my own mind up and watch it. Yeah, I watched it. I watched all 10 episodes. Okay, how was it? It was interesting. And what, what, what the thing that stood out for me was that um, there was so much going on. Right, yeah. You know, like when you watch, when you watch a you know, series, yeah. there's generally a theme going through the beginning till the end, isn't there? Right, yeah. It takes you on a journey. Yeah. And that wasn't there. There was like so much, it was a bit chaotic. Um, there was obviously the crossover about what does Islam say and, yeah. and, 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 and some aspects of that. I don't think it was as bad as people made out. Mm, yeah. you know, it's a drama. Yeah. It's taken bits of Islam and mm. uh, Islamic history around the, the, the Jal and yeah. Imam Mahdi al Islam and Christian version of this, you know, Jesus Christ yeah. reawakening and that, and try to kind of build it into a story. But yeah, it was a, it was bizarre. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed watching it. It's I'm compulsive a, viewing. Right, okay. I'm and a, the fact that you didn't know what was going to happen next. Right. That in itself, and the way it finished. I won't tell anybody how it finished, but <laughs> the way it finished. Um, yeah, it was bizarre. Anyway. I, am I watching it? Am I? I think you should watch it. Yeah. I, I think you should something. make your yeah. mind up. Definitely. I think people scare you and think and say, oh, well, you know, um, this is not very good Islamically. Yeah. Well, you know, it's just a drama. Yeah. And uh, obviously, if there was anything in there that was, um, you know, disrespectful to the deen and disrespectful to our uh, Prophet, Prophet of Islam yeah. or Zadis of Islam or Imam Mahdi Islam, who, a, any of the personalities, then obviously that's something that we, yeah. we don't encourage. Let me just be very clear about yeah. that. I don't want people to get the message that I'm somehow endorsing that sort of behaviour. We don't. Uh, the, we revere our scholars, we revere our ulama, um, Sadat, and uh, the Prophets, and the Prophets' family, and the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala, and who... And so that's one aspect of the work yeah. that you do. Um, let's talk about uh, All for Youth, yeah. which you recently set up. Yeah. What's, tell, us, tell us about All for Youth. So All for Youth is something I came up with a, a year ago. I think I've been working on this certain... Um, organization for the past year and a half now. Now All for Youth is an organization based in Rochdale and what we do as a community organization and what we are going to do because our, we get into action this year so yeah. last year was the preparations this year we get into action. We do sports, uh, football, boxing um, but there's a meaning we try to tackle mental health and depression through sports activities. Mm -hmm. we because mental health is it's kind of a taboo thing in our community, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've got a friend who's a, um, who works in mental health as a mental health nurse, and, and he did a bit of a project in, in Bradford, and he was saying um, it was the most difficult part of um, you know, his job, which was trying to break the stigma. Is, yeah. is that some of the issues that you hope to address? I think that's the main I issue we are putting our focus on. I'll give you a great example. Um, a lot of Pak Pakistani youth have come up to me and said, how can we speak to our parents? We think we, we go through this procedure, etc. Um, I think in the Pakistani community, in our communities, it's seen as a guilt. You know, they cannot open up with the parents. Mm. They can't speak to them. Whether even with the masajids, if they go to the mosque, they have no one to speak to. So it is really difficult for the youth. And we have had in the past where people have committed suicide. Yeah. 
just because we have no one has realized they are going through depression or they are going through mental health and we cr trying to create that environment you know mental health and depression is that thing that you can't tackle but you can't speak um, if that makes sense no it is yeah, yeah because we can't we can't tell if someone's going through mental yeah. health or depression the first step is always Providing a safe environment yeah. for people to have the conversation. Yeah. yeah, and this is our main focus. I mean, we had a few meetings, and our meetings, I mean, this is something different. Uh, with the past organizations I've worked with, I've looked for, I used to go youth clubs, meetings used to be all about the older generation. With me and with this platform, it's a bit different. Mm. We get the youth together to get their ideas out, to speak to us, what they want from us. You know, it's simple. If you want a football tournament, if and mental health, how can it be tackled? And the main, the main um, idea was to tackle it through sports activities. And that's the aim. And not only through that, through these little seminars where they could come in, mm. speak to someone qualified, counsellor about the mental health and depression, and get some advice. And al Alhamdulillah, you know, it's, it's, it's a start, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be a start, but Alhamdulillah, it's looking good with so many youth already involved in this organisation. And we just to keep on mental health, so that issue which you just addressed, mm. that some young people come to you and say, I can't have a conversation yeah. about, could be anything. Yeah. Could be about relationships, could be about marriage, could be about their school, their yeah. education, anything. With their parents, they don't know how to approach this yeah. subject. What, what's your message to parents watching this about how they should have a more positive and open relationship? Because we, you know, as a parent myself, um, you know, we're, we're not perfect, are we? We're, yeah. It's not as if we've been parents in a past life, is it? Yeah. It's the first time you're a parent and you, you're learning on the job, yeah. in effect, aren't you? So what's your message to parents watching this? I mean, my message to the parents is open up with your kids. It's really important. Um, don't, I mean, being strict and, you know, it's, it's part of what parents do. Like my parents, they, my mum was really strict. My dad was quiet. Can you define what strict means? Because, you know, you might say it's strict. Yeah. Oh. And it might just be something which is minor, non minor normal. Yeah. Tell us. I just said strict as in, I don't know what strict is because my mum was a too, too strict. I just said strict because she was strict on the dean. So on, she was disciplined? The, yeah. yeah. Um, and what's, what is needed, yeah. you know, for all the parents need to do that. Um, but what I said to the parents, um, if I go to my father, for example, I could speak to him about anything. Mm. About my home life, my uh, you know, social life. Um, so I could speak to him and open up to him, knowing that my father will listen to me. And that's the same message I want to say to all the parents out there. Listen to your children and listen to their problems. Because there's, there's a lot of Pakistani youth who are not able to open up. Mm. They're like stuck in this little nutshell. They don't know who to go to. Mm. And if they think they're going to speak to someone, it's going to be seen as a guilt in their family. Yeah. And mental health depression, uh, to all the viewers watching, it's not a guilt. Yeah. You know, there's, there's help out there. You know, there's people who will speak to you. You will get the support. And sticking in this little nutshell, it just builds that pressure of yeah. mental health and depression within yourself. So it's really important for the parents, not, not only to support them, but take them through this journey yeah. to try to you know, get this away from them. And sometimes, with a few cases I've dealt with personally, on social media, on Snapchat, all they need is someone to speak to, that's it. They will tell you your problems, they will go through what's happened in their previous life, um, etc. But they just need someone to listen to them. And that's what I've mm -hmm. done with the youth. There's a difference between listening and talking, because I've, I've, I've had a recent uh, instance with my children where um, you don't realise that you're talking to them yeah. rather than listening to them. And it's trying to get that balance right, isn't it? Yeah. Where you actually have to self-reflect and think, okay, this, this, is, this particular conversation is now going to be a listening exercise. Mm. I want you to do more talking and I want you, I, I, me, and my, me and your mother are going to listen. And, and that's been kind of difficult as well as for parents because they're kind of head of the house, <coughs> they're the adults. Yeah. And they think if they give a bit of talking. freedom. Do, 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 do you see where I'm coming from? Is, yeah, that, no, is that a reasonable explanation? Yeah, it makes, it makes sense. And not to um, have to mention that in the Pakistani community, if someone is saying they're going through uh, any mental health issues, it's seen as 
black magic. Yeah. Is straight away. Straight away. Yeah, let's take him to the uh, dodgy beer or something. Yeah. <laughs> black magic, straight away, go get a TVs, etc. But the Pakistan our people need to understand that mental health and depression exists. It's simple as we have to accept that. Even the parents have to accept it. It's not a guilt. Mm. And like like I said, the last person I spoke to he goes, I spoke to my parents, they took me to a peer. <laughs> so it does happen, yeah. you know, it's, it's not just because I'm saying it, it does happen it, and it's still that happening. Is because um, people want instant results, don't they? They, they really think that uh, Peace Sahib call, uh, we go to Peace Sahib and Peace Sahib will give us a tawiz or they'll do a dam, whatever, and uh, the person will be back to normal. Yeah. Whereas in reality they've got multiple issues to deal yeah. with, psychological, mental health issues, um, that really need specialist help. Yeah, I've, I, th I think you're right there, that's, that's what they think, oh, if you go to a certain period, we get the results straight away, he'll be fine, and that's it, it's all over. Mm. But in reality, it, it, it's not a two-minute you know, type of job or just a dumb month. Sometimes it can be, you know, the issue of black magic if it's yeah. related to jeans, etc. But it's not always the issue. And this day and age with the youth, it, it, it's, it's quite common that mental health and depression exists. It's a big issue, which is not necessarily just an issue for our viewers' sake. We're not here, Hassan and myself both saying, that this is a uniquely a uh, Indian subcontinent, Asian, Pakistani, mm. Bengali, Indian issue. It affects all communities, and you know the white community yeah. have similar white males who suffer from mental health struggle to talk about mental health, and it's been a big issue for them as well, hasn't it? Yeah, and even in the white community, you know, I'm not only saying our community. All I'm trying to say is that. Inshallah, hopefully in the future we open up more to our kids. But yeah, it exists in the white community as well. We, in, like I said, <coughs> this all for youth, this organization, mm. it's like Buzzman is was a separate organization. This is an organization what I've launched to, for any culture, any religion, any background. Mm. You know, we want anyone to join us, whether you are Sikh, uh, Christian, Hindu, it doesn't matter. You know, we could all come together and make that difference within our communities. And the unique thing about this platform is, it's run by the youth. Yeah. All the ideas and the projects you see is from students themselves. So I think it's, it's going to be an amazing organisation. And hopefully. is it because they're, kind of, they're either living that life yeah. as a young person, or they've been through it, they've been through mental health, they've been through their issues, and, and so they're able to offer that personal yeah. experience? With the, with the last meeting we had, we had quite a few people who attended who've been through mental health and depression. And that's really good for us because they could then again speak to the youth who are suffering from mental health. Um, because when you the similar age, you get to understand the, their generation much more better than anyone else. Um, so, yeah, we've got people who are, um, who've been through, who used to be in drugs, who used to be in gangs, and they have come off the streets to join All for Youth. Um, not, not to join all for you to make themselves a better person, you know, because we give chance to everyone and this is our aim. It doesn't matter where you're from, uh, what was, whatever was your past life, whether it was to do with gangs, knife crime, drugs. We allow them to come and make a change within themselves and that, that's what's happening at the moment in all for you. We're getting a team together and alhamdulillah we've, we've got a team together and inshallah this year it's going to be all in action. So what sort of things will you be doing? So, we got football tournaments, we got residential trips, we got seminars, we got the launch event still to come up. Um, we got a lot of stuff going on. Oh, education. Um, so we will we, be speaking to employee, employers for apprenticeships for the young people. And today I just had a meeting and I'm happy to reveal that I won't say what company, but we already we got an employer um, who come on board with us today. Fantastic! And Congratulations! They're going, yeah, and they're going to train the students um, in sales and how to you know work in in, in a call center environment, yeah, yeah. you know, for part time as well. Mm. So the employer has actually come on board today, and he's going to organize a training session. And he's a director of a really big business. And I'm going, I can't reveal it Obviously, just yet yeah, yeah. on TV, uh, but yeah, it just shows already we've got an employer. Um, who is willing to come on board under All for Youth and give the young people the opportunity mm. to work for him. And I think this is, again, a major issue because it's really hard to find jobs th this day and age. And with our experience, you, it's really difficult. So we're also trying to create um, experience for the youth to go out there to work, to build their CV 
so they have references that they can rely on when they go for a job interview. We also prepare them for job interviews, of course, as well. And this is happening, it's getting there slowly. But Alhamdulillah, like I said, today we had our first employer who will, um, of course, be willing to come under all for youth and employ some youngsters. So generally, um, sort of mental health, sports, fitness, yeah. and then you, some of those taboo topics that you mentioned yeah. about mental health or other issues around forced marriage, violence, drugs, you know, knife the contemporary crime, yeah. issue, knife crime, um, and the rise of crime within yeah. communities, the drug dealing and stuff like that. I think drug, uh, in, uh, yeah, drug dealing is a rise. You know, in Rochdale it is, especially you see, every street in the corner you see yeah. drug, drug dealing going on. And this is our aim to, you know, make sure that our youth and the new generation does not get on to the wrong track and we will try our best and the best way is to get people who have already experienced doing drugs in their life being part of our gang mm. and it's not a good experience they have their reasons you know um, I'm not saying it's a good thing to do of yeah, course I'm obviously. not promoting that but they it's good when they share their story with the youth because it inspires them and it also gives them an education if I'm going to go on this path this way I'm going to end up Okay, let's take a call. Let's, uh, you, we're live, as we said, on my channel, 01204 is our number. We're on Facebook Live, so if you're watching us on Facebook Live, a very warm welcome to all of you and the people that will be watching uh, later on uh, in terms of catch-up. We're on YouTube as well, alhamdulillah. Uh, so welcome to everybody watching us around the world on that platform as well. But let's see who's on the phone. Assalamu alaikum. I'm good, thanks. Who's that? My name is Mohammed Zafran from Birmingham. Birmingham, okay. Welcome, sir. How are you doing? Yeah, Alhamdulillah. How are you? I'm good, thank you. What would you like to say? I would like to uh, first of all congratulate uh, Brother Hassan, mashallah, for doing a brilliant job for you doing for the community, all for you, who is going to do, inshallah, and uh, mm. for Bosma Zaza already, mashallah, he's done a fantastic job good to set up this platform. Thank you very much for calling in. The brother Zafran is actually. It's Zafran, isn't it? Yeah. I thought I recognised the voice, Zafran. Yeah, but there was three voices. Yeah, I can recognise you. Your the brummy accents coming out in the end of your sentences. By the way, salam from my son Sahil Nawaz. Yeah, Waalaikum Salam. Thank you so much uh, for your call and your encouragement. I mean, he's somebody else um, who is who's really active in Birmingham and tragedy has kind of. In life, you get tragedy in your life. Yeah. And there's two ways to deal with it. You either turn into your shell and get on with your life and try to rebuild it, or you give something back. And, yeah. and people like um, Zafran is Zafran is uh, somebody who's yeah. you know had been through the tragedy of, 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 of losing somebody close to him, but then doing some fantastic work in yeah. the community. He's been involved with me since day yeah. one. Buzzman, he's the ambassador of Buzzman's events. Uh, so he's also written 400 clams. MashaAllah. Over 400 clams. So he, he, he gives Abu Nashid artists a chance to read his clown, something really unique. Yeah, yeah. And his son is amazing, Sahil Zafran is yeah. amazing what he does, uh, mashallah, his recitation is amazing. And he, you know, has supported me under All For Youth, you know, he is a personality who took 24, 20, I think over 25,000 youth off the streets into his academy. He's won awards from the Queen and I think he's, he's in my inspiration as well, you know, I do look up to him. Um, he's been in this field for a really long he has, time. Yeah, yeah. And are you trying to say he's old? No. <laughs> well, more experienced than me. Yeah. Oh, I, I like that. I like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's the most politest way to say yes. You're an old codger, <laughs> but which he's, he's not an old codger. No, just for the record, he has been a really helpful yeah, and yeah. in all for youth. He's, he plays a really big part in all for youth behind the scenes, and I pray that we have people like him within our organisation. And where's the funding com coming from this? The funding, because doing this type yeah. of work, it's it's it, it's it's difficult. But you yeah. need a lot. You need money, don't you? Yeah, of course. To run these events and, and, and events, is that fundraising, community activism? What, how you of course, we we be getting funding from the government, uh, national lottery, and the awards for all funding. So, we we of course we we're doing events and we do these tournaments. Of course, it, it does. We can't rely on sponsors now. Obviously, businesses. Yeah. It's not just a one-off event. Yeah. It's going to happen all year round. So we are getting funding. And again, like I said, something unique about this platform is 
the youth have actually sat with us and we've gone through the funding and we asked them what they want, what they want to do with that money. So, you know, like I said, we're really open. Mm. We are an open organisation for the youth out there. So, alhamdulillah. And in essence, how do, you, how, do we, how, do, how do people get in touch with you if they wanted to get involved and learn more about it? So we got, of course, um, Snapchat, you can all follow, All for Youth 2019. We're on Facebook, All for Youth. And very soon we'll be launching our website as well. So, yeah, stay tuned. And hopefully next time I come here, everything will be in action. And in essence, it's about engaging young people, empowering them, yeah. um, giving them a purpose in life and life skills. Yeah, like I said, we we're not only looking. It's not only the sports we look at, or the fitness we look at. We also look at we look out for the future, such as um, helping them build their CVs, um, getting them into apprenticeships, getting them jobs. Um, so life life skills. We're also going to do confident. Um, Gain the confidence training, uh, so there's there's a lot what we have planned, and like I said, there's only an hour for the show, so but I could go through every project <laughs> in detail. Yeah, and no, obviously, yeah, yeah. Um, but alhamdulillah, like I said, last year the full year and a half has been preparations. You know, the, whatever the legal requirements were for myself, I had to do setting up the projects. This year, in the next few months, it comes in action, and those who are watching, get involved. Because we're not only going to be based in Rochdale, our plan is to get this organisation um, well known nationally, um, internationally as well. It's not internationally, all around the UK, sorry. Um, so yeah, inshallah. And, and obviously we're coming towards the end of the programme, we've got about 10 minutes or so, but let's, let's just kind of summarise. So you've got, you've got this Buzzme Razal, which you're still doing, yeah. still passionate about. Yep. And now you're doing this... How are you going to manage it? <laughs> I, I think my father asked the same question. Um, yeah. I, I, I'm not sure. I think um, I, I like to keep myself busy. Mm. Buzz Mirza only gets busy in Rabi Lowell. But I think now it's getting busy all year round. You know, we have to travel internationally. We have to travel all around the UK. Weekends are usually booked. But Alhamdulillah, I, I just have to keep on top of everything. I have a schedule. I have a diary. So, yeah. Just have to make sure. Uh, time management is key, isn't time it? Time management. Yeah, because yeah. one of the criticisms, if I like, have some of these methods, mm. is, um, and it's generally criticism of the community. Yeah. As well as the organisers, as well as the guest, is that you know if a program's supposed to start at six o'clock, people yeah. arrive at nine o'clock. <laughs> yeah. And so you end up getting you know the your guest, which is delayed as well. Um, you might be going to two or three different methods, and yeah. there's a knock-on effect there. And if people don't turn up till nine o'clock, then um, it, it tends to go on for another two, three hours. Yeah, um, we've, we've seen that in the past where we've put 6 p.m. star on our grand mallets and it's not started till 9 p.m. Even with the guests, you tell them to arrive at 7 p.m., but they won't arrive. Three, they arrive when they want, basically. They arrive three hours late, um, even though knowing that they have to decide at 7 p.m. or 6 p.m. It, it can be really difficult because, of course, um, this year, um, I think they were quite strict on timings, the local mosques. It's really important because we live in an environment that we have our neighbours we have to look after, we have to look, our, we have to look after people who live around the mosques. And if you've got our mayfield going on till 2 a.m. in the morning, it's going to disrupt people who have work, college, university the next day. So, you know, going back in Buzz mm. Mirza, we're very strict on timings and we always make sure, you know, we finish on time. Okay, and what's the future hold for you? Sorry? What's the future holding for you? Future, my, um, my whole, my focus... Have you graduated yet? Not at the moment. Okay, no. so you still need to graduate? Uh, so I took a gap year. Okay, you took honest. a gap year. Yeah, um, just for All for Youth. Yeah. Um, so the future for All for Youth, I think, the future for this, for myself is get this organisation out there, this organisation to be a helping hand for the youth out there and um, a platform for the youth where they could turn to in need of help if they suffer mental health depression or if they just want um, to do something in their spare time get involved volunteer attend our meetings you know we've got sports activities launching in the next few months and this I've, I've put my all focus on this because I know that it's much needed definitely in Rochdale 
and alhamdulillah um, we've got already 50 60 youth involved and it's not even been launched yet so i think the future inshallah um, by the prayers of my parents is looking good and just finally you, we talked about you know your things to relax what do you do to um, food wise and food wise what sort of food do you like um, of course mum food mum food is the best yeah, yeah. yeah. but mum's in Pakistan oh, she's she? been in Pakistan for a month and a half so it's I love my burgers <laughs> your burgers yeah chunky chicken okay uh, for those people who don't know that's a really popular place <laughs> quite expensive <laughs> so, expensive um, yes yeah, yeah. I'm really sorry I'm Really beautiful food, yeah, if you wanted to try it. Um, that's not an advertisement. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I, I love going out and eating burgers and trying new places. Um, I've had, I think today I had, ch yeah, today morning I had Chunkies and then I had Arizona just on the way here, so. Wow. Yeah, I love my food. You look, you love your food and what else? Uh, football, which team do you support? Um, United. Oh, good man. <laughs> I, I always thought you were a great man in terms of your intelligence and... Uh, your vision. I only support and, and United because even, my dad supports them. So. Well, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, to, uh, yeah, I think, yeah, social life, going out of cinemas, I think Bad Boys 3 is coming out next week, so I'm going to watch that. Okay. Yeah, so you see, yeah. <laughs> what you're trying to say to our young people watching this, it, it's, you know, in Islam, there is that balance is important. Yeah. You know, don't be too extreme. Yeah. yeah in, um, I, I think my words very carefully here, but not, don't be too consumed but get the balance right because yeah. the Prophet said there was I remember a, a, a hadith spark where the Prophet some the Sahaba were there constantly in prayer and the Prophet said to them you know your, your body's got rights over you make sure you have enough rest and your yeah. family has rights over you um, and that's important yeah. getting the balance right yeah and that's that's what I try to do I always you know keep your deen and keep your dunya basically and that's what my mom always said to me keep your deen you know make sure you remember Allah at all times and keep your dunya you know it's like I said you know make sure you're praying you know make sure you know you make a difference in the community try your best to help other people try whether it be your neighbors or the people around you or the youth i feel the youth is so uh, what i'm putting my focus into but yeah i've always kept uh, my deen and i've also kept my dunya and alhamdulillah inshallah hope to like i said promote much more projects on this tv channel very soon yeah well we look forward to welcoming you um back to my channel yep. uh, a future date yeah. I hope uh, you uh, enjoy yourself and uh, wish you all the best. I really find it informative and I wish you well. Um, Hassan Ali there from Rochdale, uh, all for youth, and Buzmir Azar was my special guest here on Friday Night Live. In essence, our young people are our future. And as adults, as parents, uh, we need to sometimes try to understand how our children are operating and living their lives. And something which Hassan said there early on in the program, uh, as parents, we tend to, and I include myself in this, we tend to do the talking to our children. Maybe it's a time that we learned to listen to our children. And if we want to see our children and our community uh, thrive and be successful, then education is the most important thing. And we hope that here at Omar Channel we'll be able to bring you similar guests who are doing some fantastic work in this country. But for me, Mohammed Shafiq and the whole team here on my channel, thank you so much for joining us and I'll see you very, very soon. Asalaamu Alaikum. At Goldman Knightley Solicitors, we offer a range of legal services built around what you need. Our aim is simple, to provide you with the best service in a legal capacity, whether it be on immigration, employment law, family law, personal injury, medical or clinical negligence. A national practice with traditional values. Putting you first. Contact us now on 0333 577 1313 or visit goldmannightly.co.uk today to see how we can help. Muhammadun 
القاب توپ کاپی میوزیم استنبول ترکی میں موجود جناب رسالت امام صلی اللہ علیہ وآلہ وسلم کا القاب نامی 